Hello everyone, this is Vedant Deshmukh over here. Uh, again, I'm back with a new session of class 9th ICSE, that is respiration in plants combined with musculoskeletal system. So we would be dealing with the different aspects of respiration, um, the different, uh, what we can say, the different, you know, how plants respire, what is the difference between respiration and, uh, you know, our respiration and uh, what do you call uh, photosynthesis and what are the different uh, aspects that go into it and how you know plant respire how uh, a normal you can say um, how a normal person respires how a plant respires uh, then in uh, what are the you know um, criteria for respiration then we will follow it up with the next chapter that is musculoskeletal system in which we would learn about different types of muscle different types of bones so it is going to be an amazing long session at least one and a, one hour 30 minutes ka session hone wala hai, if it goes well so without wasting any time let us get into it we are studying today respiration in plants And just give me a second. Let me just change the page template. Yeah. Respiration in plants as well as musculo skeleton system. Cool. So let us get into firstly what is respiration. So Respiration, as we all know, it is a process of breaking down. Process. Sorry, let me write down the heading first. What is respiration? Respiration, I can see. It is a reaction or a process in which glucose breaks down to form energy. Basically, what happens in respiration? Um, there is glucose, right? When we, you know, when we eat something, when it is all, you know, good and digested, it forms glucose. So this glucose now has to be broken and combined with the adenosine triphosphate in order to um, produce energy. So that is what respiration is. Now, most people at this point have a common, you know, you can say... Um, common misconception maybe that breathing and respiration are both similar processes. No, they are not similar processes. They have similar, uh, you know, uh, you can say they uh, tend to have similar properties, but not they cannot be classified into one single criteria. So let us see how it can be said. Sorry. Um, yeah, I was saying that in respiration, what is the common difference between breathing and respiration? So let us look into it. Firstly, breathing. Is just normal intake and exhale of air. Whereas in respiration, it is the process of breakdown of glucose to form energy. Now, that was the basic difference among them. Okay. So if, if someone asks you, because you're in class 9th, you're not in 10th yet. 
So I would not go into the much depths of breathing and respiration, what organs are involved and all of that stuff. Um, but as soon as you will be in class ninth, I'll tell you what is the basic difference between them. This is the basic difference that breathing is intake and uh, inhale, inhalation and exhalation of air, whereas in respiration, it is a breakdown of glucose to form various, you can say, to form glucose. Uh, sorry, breakdown of glucose to form energy. Yeah. Now, you might say, ki, okay, chalo. Maan liya ki it is the breakdown. Okay. So, you must say ki agar breakdown ho raha hai, agar breakdown is there, to it must have some kind of uh, chemical reaction. Yes, it does. So what happens over here in case of plants is that C6, sorry, let me just get a brighter pen. We have C6H12O6. This combines with six molecules, six moles of oxygen to give off six molecules of carbon dioxide plus six molecules of water plus energy. This is the reaction. Now, this detailed explanation it is again not in 10th also, it is in 12th. If you take biology, then only uh, you'll be able to know. Otherwise, there is uh, not a requirement, you know, ki humko hai chahi, but even if you want, you can just text me. I will, you know, respond to you as soon as I can. Now, what are the three important characteristics of the sick patient? Let us look into that. So, first is breakdown of glucose. Okay, that is the most important. Now, breakdown of glucose cannot occur in, uh, you know, it cannot occur in a single step. Like glucose, as we see here, is breaking down into 6 CO2 and 6 H2O plus energy. It is not a simple process, obviously. It might require, you know, some temperature, some catalyst to go with it. And then, you know, it might have a full course meal. To... <laughs> Just kidding. So um, they have, uh, specific criteria. Okay, they have specific characters. First is um, there are basically uh, chemical steps. Okay, so first is glycolysis. Glycolysis me kya hota hai? Glycolysis occurs in cytoplasm. Jab glucose ko convert kiya jata hai pyruvate. Mein. It occurs in cytoplasm when glucose is converted into pyruvate. Correct? Now, iske baad, ek aur cycle aata hai, jisko we call it Krebs cycle. Ab iska naam Krebs cycle kaise pada bhi? Obviously, jo scientist tha, uh, kya naam tha unka? Krebs. Um, I guess, Johan Krebs. Unhone ye concept diya tha. So unke naam pe ye pad gaya. This, uh, the biologists love to name, you know, different kinds of um, organisms, structures after their name. So <laughs> we can't say anything. We don't have seen that. They discovered it. So pyruvate here breaks down into 6 CO2 plus 6 H2O plus ATP. Now, this happens due to a particular enzyme. Yeah, there is a particular enzyme, which I'll not tell you the name because it is not in your syllabus. Again, if you want the name, I can, you know, uh, just text you at that particular thing because uh, I want this session to be short and concise. So, you know, just let's just aim for that. Cool. Achha, this happens in mitochondria. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. 
सबको पता है मीम भी बन चुका है आजकल बहुत गंदा वाला माइटोकॉन्ड्री इज द पावर हाउस ऑफ द सेल सो माइटोकॉन्ड्री होता है ठीक ना अब ये जो एनर्जी लिब्रेट हुआ ठीक है एनर्जी दैट इज लिबरेटेड इज नॉट ऑलवेज एवरीथिंग इज नॉट लिबरेटेड एट वंस राइट तो इसका जो मेजर पार्ट रहता है वो कन्वर्ट हो जाता है एटीपी विच इज अडीनो साइन ट्राई फॉस्फेट या इट साइन ट्राई फॉस्फेट में कन्वर्ट हो जाता है ना देर आर टू यू नो two similar names over here first is atp then it is adp I'm sorry and it is atp that is adeno sign di phosphate now you may ask what is the difference between these two atp or adp mein difference kya hai so let me tell you That जब हमारा ब्रेकडाउन होता है ऑफ यू नो वॉट वॉज बींग ब्रोकन डाउन पायरोट पायरोट को कन्वर्ट किया गया पायरोविक एसिड में पायरोविक एसिड ब्रोक सॉरी मैं अच्छा दिस इज यू नो थोड़ा सा एडवांस लेवल का सो सी वॉट हैपन जस्ट इमेजिन थ्री स्टेप्स Just imagine four steps in front of you. Four boxes. First has glucose, second has pyruvate, third has pyruvic acid, fourth has uh, carbon dioxide, water, and energy. You can say it. So This glucose is breaking down into pyruvate. Pyruvate acid is breaking down into pyruvic acid. Glucose is six carbon molecules. Pyruvate is a three carbon molecule. It is broken, being broken down into pyruvic acid. Now this pyruvic acid gets converted into carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Now when this energy, that is the ATP, adenosine triphosphate, this ATP is a chemical substance. Okay, it you know it is uh, that particular. um what you can say that energy is converted into chemical energy which is which is this atp now this atp uh you can say um when that atp ka energy is used theek hai when this atp ka energy is used ab to ye khatam ho gaya theek hai to it it converts into adp got it so adp is reconverted to atp and so it goes on let me draw you a chart that is given in your book over here acha now one may ask ki a glucose ke mol se kitna atp release hota hai to a glucose jab break down hoga tab usse 38 molecules of atp release hoga okay. theek hai Moving on. I'm sorry. Yeah. Moving on. We have glucose is done. ADP conversion is done. Now let us, you know, uh, see a diagram. A uh, you know bit of a detail. What happens actually? I'm sorry for all these messages popping up. I can't put them on sleep because you know some calls are there which I have to attend. So glucose. is breaking down into energy also into co2 plus h2o now this energy some is being released in the form of heat some is being stored in the form of atp now atp is when used in work and it converts it converts into adp now when a phosphate is added and a phosphate is reduced it gets converted into adp and atp simultaneously see kitne easily humne pura respiration ek step mein bata diya that is the basic thing now let us uh, categorize adp further what just happened yeah let us categorize adp further adp is the energy currency of cell 
ADP is the energy currency of cell. Okay, and uh, this is a chemical compound you can write. Energy currency of cell, which is a chemical compound. Cool. Let us move on. ATP ka formula, uh, kya tha? Uh, full form kya tha? Adding sign trifles. Now, there are two types of metabolic activities going on inside a particular organism, particular living organism. Living organisms ke under. There are two activities that are going on. First is anabolic. Sorry, what was spinning? Anabolic. The other one is catabolic. What is the basic difference? See, anabolic it is known as constructive or biosynthetic process. It consumes energy. Energy leta hai. Okay, energy in the wall. Okay, how Energy in the wall. That means draw a wall, draw this signature like this. That will show you that it is an anabolic process, that energy is coming inside. Okay, catabolic is energy outside the wall. Okay, it gives out energy to be used by it. So, inside uh, living organisms, both reaction happen simultaneously. An anabolic, for example, let me give you a simple example. I have told that humans also respirate. Obviously, respirate karte, they have energy requirements. That respiration is a catabolic process. And when, uh, for example, your heart is beating right now, you can you know, just feel your heart beating by just checking your pulse. Uh, that is how doctors measure your pulse. And you can also, you know, grab an estimate of uh, if your heart is beating or not, which it, it obviously is. So, um, this heartbeat, this heart which is beating right now, ye jo hai energy consume karke beat kar raha hai, theke? contraction and relaxation mein. you will learn it about in 10th clearly. So, jab constrict or relax ho rahe hai, wahan ke cardiac muscles, to it is, you know, uh, consuming energy. So, anabolic process. At the same time, respiration is giving out energy. So, a catabolic process. Both reactions go hand in hand. Now, let us go further. Uh, respiration versus burning. Utna important nahi hai. It is not usually asked. Acha. Now, one thing which is very important over here. You might think that you know. Respiration sirf leaf me hota hai. This is very wrong. Respiration sirf leaf me nahi hota. Respiration occurs in every part of the plant, but photosynthesis only works jaha par chlorophyll present hai. So this you already knew. Respiration ka you did not have a clue about. So respiration leaf may ni. Har ek parts no ta. For example, stomata. Leaf ke. Leaf ka example de diya. Lentic cells. Uh, basically kya hota hai? Let me draw a quick bark over here. For example, this is a bark. Wooden bark. Thik hai? Upar iske tree hai. Just ignore that. Ab yahaan par kya hota hai? There are openings like this. Okay? These openings are called lenticles. Lenticles or lenticels. Lenticels. Yeah? So, this may say gaseous exchange. Okay? Now, general surface of the roots, as we know, roots are porous. This root is. यहां पर से आता भी है यहां पर से जाता भी है तो रूट्स ऑफ पोरस
and thereby they also respire. Each and every part of the you know uh, living organism respires. Now, what is the difference you may say between aerobic and anaerobic respiration? Again, respiration ko fir se do categories mein hum divide karte hain. Respiration can divide into two. Draw a margin. Draw a box. Mein jaise bachpan mein karte the. छोटे छोटे बच्चे हुआ करते थे हम लोग अभी भी बच्चे ही हैं बट स्टिल इट डज नॉट मैटर लेट इज फोकस ऑन आर चैप्टर करेंटली फर्स्ट इज एनरोबिक सेकेंड इज एरोबिक यू मे आस्क वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन एरोबिक एंड एनोरोबिक रेस्पिरेशन सी एरोबिक मीन्स रेस्पिरेशन विच ऑकर्स इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ ऑक्सीजन ठीक है ऑक्सीजन के प्रेजेंस में ये होगा वेयर एज एनोरोबिक में ऑक्सीजन ऑक्सीजन का प्रेजेंस नहीं होगा और ऑक्सीजन लैक में होगा ऑक्सीजन लैक ठीक है दैट इज द बेसिक डिफरेंस ना अब यहां पर क्या होता है लेटर सी एनोरोबिक एरोबिक का एग्जाम्पल फर्स्ट Go up. Yes. Yeah. Let us see aerobic example first. Yeah. Aerobic respiration. So aerobic respiration. Same cheese. C six H twelve O six. Plus six oxygen breaks down to form six CO two plus six H two O plus thirty eight molecules of ATP. Yeah, so this is what happens in anaerobic anaerobic respiration, or you can say oxy biotic respiration. Yeah. Now next thing. This anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration is also divided into two parts, where there is incomplete breakdown and then there is complete breakdown. Um, but I guess it is not mentioned here. But still, I can tell you if you want. See, anaerobic respiration may this glucose does not break down properly. So C six breaks down to form two C two H five. नसीब तो देखो अभी मैं अपना लेक्चर कंप्लीट करके आ रहा हूँ ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री का और यहाँ के तुम लोगों को इतना और पढ़ा रहा हूँ नाइस सो C two two C two H five O H plus और क्या है हमारे पास two कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड plus ठीक है, दिस इज वॉट हैपन्स इन एनोरोबिक रेस्पिरेशन ठीक है इथाइल एल्कोहल और इथेनॉल एंड कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड विद रिलीज ऑफ स्मॉल क्वांटिटी ऑफ एनर्जी इज फॉलो नाउ दिस इज कॉल्ड एनोरोबिक रेस्पिरेशन बिकॉज इट प्रोसीड विदाउट ऑक्सीजन नाउ एनोरोबिक रेस्पिरेशन कैन नॉट कंटिन्यू फॉर मोर देन अ फ्यू डेज बिकॉज द पार्ट अल्टीमेटली डाइज ठीक है, बट देर आर सर्टन बैक्टीरिया कि चलो अब तो हम लोगों को करके देखना है रेस्पिरेशन कैसे प्लांट सही में करते हैं कि नहीं भैया ऐसी बकवास कर रहा है ऑफ कोर्स करके देख सकते हो एवरीथिंग इज साइंटिफिकली मेजर्ड आउट फर्स्ट ठीक है सो 
let me choose a color ha huh. so see the first thing you can do is a lime water test what this basically is jab ye kaha gaya jab ye aerobic respiration ho raha hai plant mein to it is broken down into six carbon dioxide right so jo ye six carbon dioxide hai it turns carbon dioxide turns lime water milky theek hai lime water is basically calcium hydroxide calcium hydroxide ke sath if you mix co2 it forms calcium carbonate so it is non soluble in nature okay this you will learn in class 10th or your physics uh, chemistry theek hai to let us take a flask इसमें कुछ बीन्स वगैरह डाल लो ठीक है ऊपर से ढक्कन बंद कर दो नाउ आफ्टर कीपिंग दिस हियर फॉर अ फ्यू डेज इन सनलाइट डायरेक्ट एक्सपोजर ऑफ सनलाइट एंड मॉइस्चर व्हाट विल हैपन यू विल ऑब्जर्व कि फर्स्ट दिस थिंग इज यू नो मॉइस्ट एंड वेट लाइक दिस एंड द सीड्स हैव स्टार्टेड जर्मिनेटिंग ठीक है नाउ these are soaked beans okay these are not uh, you know boiled ones ye soaked wale so jab inko you will open you will take a drop of lime water in it isme lime water hai you can write calcium hydroxide also calcium hydroxide so jab isme se iska jo lime water uh, carbon dioxide hai usko pass karaya jayega to ye lime water mil gayi that would present uh, that would uh, presume that there is a presence of carbon dioxide so that thing was respiring in the same case boiled beans ke sath nahi hoga because boiled beans are already killed theek okay? hai now the second experiment is indeed a very you know again a basic experiment see what we do over here we take two flask label the first one as a then the b take take a bell jar place a pot inside it and a plant theek okay? hai what would happen connect this to a pump then here would be lime water you just write calcium hydroxide here also calcium hydroxide now this is clean air theek okay? hai then this is all clean air this side is all clean air okay this is co2 free it doesn't have co2 because here the lime water does not turn milky it is clear when you put milky ho jata that would have predicted ki wahan par already hai yahan par soda lime dala jata hai to you know uh, extract any moisture so that pure air hai theek hai so this thing is uh, flown through here then it goes again via pipe into this now this comes out here bubbles then a suction pump this is the apparatus theek hai it is placed on a table so what you will observe over here when these plants respire they are releasing carbon dioxide so ye system mein carbon dioxide gaya then again lime water mein carbon dioxide gaya to it turned milky that is the present basically whatever experiment you have to do you have to do with um, carbon dioxide only now photosynthesis versus respiration theek okay, hai what is the difference between photosynthesis and respiration i will tell you just orally then you already have the notes of that so i'll tell you just orally uh, photosynthesis is actually only occurring in the presence of a chlorophyll while respiration occurs in all living cells um photosynthesis mein oxygen is released at the end product uh, respiration mein carbon dioxide is released ye dono ko to compare hi nahi kar sakte you already know the difference what is between them right so photosynthesis you can mention light energy gets converted into chemical then you know uh and it is stored as a form in the form of malic acid 
then uh, this that result in gain in weight ठीक है देन रेस्पिरेशन वेट लॉस में वो होता है ऑक्सीडेशन होता है डिस्ट्रक्शन होता है कैटाबॉलिक प्रोसेस होता है या दैट आर ऑल द डिफरेंट थिंग्स यू शुड मेंशन नाउ लेट अस लुक एट सम क्वेश्चंस ग्लाइकोलिस इज अ प्रोसेस इन व्हिच ए इज ब्रोकन ग्लूकोस ग्लूकोस ग्लाइकोजन इज ब्रोकन डाउन इनटू ग्लूकोस बी व्हिच ऑकर्स इन माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया in which glucose is broken down into pyruvate then that occurs next to krebs cycle the answer is c in which glucose is broken down into broken down into pyruvate because uh, in the starting i told you that it does secondly it, 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 it broke, broke it breaks down glucose into pyruvate then pyruvate gets converted into pyruvic acid secondly we have what is the common same common function performed by Stomata in veins, stomata in lenticels lenticels in sepals and lenticels in hydatodes c i can explain uh, this question to you what this question is basically saying that compare one common function jo given option hai usme se jo jiska common function hai usko chuno stomata and vein kahan se ek jaisa hai theek hai we have stomata and lenticels Yes, this is the correct option because see, stomata may be gaseous exchange or I open money, but I let this is a CV gaseous exchange or that. So same function. Now, very short answer and short answer types to hold Jenga ticket can all skin cell respiration occur in an organism at the temperature about 65 degrees Celsius. Yes, it absolutely can occur um, as cellular respiration, I guess does not uh, should not happen. let me just check if i am wrong no cellular respiration does not okay yeah cellular respiration can occur at the temperature of 65 degrees celsius because we saw in the case of you know the those boiling beans so when they were above 100 degrees celsius they were uh, you know uh, not able to respire okay so that was uh, your this part um respiration in plants do tell me uh, if you liked it or not and now let's move on to um, musculoskeletal system that is skeleton movement and locomotion this chapter is my favorite my personal favorite chapter not because i want to go into medical har ek medical student ke liye har ek biology ka chapter acha rehta hai but this chapter is my personal favorite because it tells us so many things basically जो बोन है ठीक है बोन कुछ दिखता भी नहीं है बोन बस ऐसे लगता है कि कुछ है बस यू नो मेड अप ऑफ कैल्शियम उसके अंदर बीन्स वगैरह बोन मैरो बट एक्चुअली प्लेज अ वेरी वाइटल रोल इन दैट वी डू नॉट रियलाइज ठीक है सो वी जस्ट टेक बोन्स फॉर ग्रांटेड वन मिनट साइलेंस फॉर बोन एंड आई एम वेरी बैड एट मेकिंग पंस पार्ड मी फॉर दैट सो लेट इज मूव ऑन एंड टॉक अबाउट स्केल्टन सिक्स skeleton system what actually is talked in skeleton system just a second yeah what actually is taught in skeleton system uh, we will learn about the function of human skeleton what all it does we will learn about calcification decalcification of bones we would uh, learn how many types of bones are there such as long short flat and irregular then we have classification based on shape we will learn about the human skeleton again like the axial skeleton the appendicular skeleton what are the carpals metacarpals then we would learn about the skull the vertebral column the difference between vertebral column and uh, spinal cord because that is a common misconception nowadays then we would learn different types of vertebra or the so vertebral column is the plural vertebra is a singular sorry for being so fast thoracic vertebra that means this part this Till here, till this, then we have the you know lower vertebra, then the upper vertebra, or you can say anterior, uh, uh, atlas and axial. You can say these views we will take. Then uh, we will talk about cervical vertebrae. Then we will talk about thoracic. Then we will talk about lumbar. Then uh, we will talk about different kinds of ribs. Then we would talk about bones, limbs, k. Then girdles. Then um, you know what is movable joints what are not movable joints we will talk about joints also what conducts you know such smooth motion amongst those joints 
and uh, what are the different kind of joints, what are synovial joints, that is very important, okay? And then we will learn about muscles, voluntary and voluntary cardiac, then we will learn about lever mechanisms, and then our chapter would come to an end. So without wasting any further time, let us just dive right into it. No, now, what is meant by a skeleton apparently? What is a skeleton? Skeleton is basically a structure. What is skeleton? Skeleton is basically structure. It is a structure, right? Look at me. I am a structure right now. I am an organism. I have a particular structure. My face shape is uh, face shape is like this. I have uh, vertebras. My skull shape is the same. You are and actually, you know one thing. Skull ka shape har ek ka ek jaise hota hai. Agar kuch defect na ho, to general. But face ko dekh ke log bolte hai ki nahi iska skull bhi hai. Aisa nahi rehta. Skull ka shape sab ka ek jaise rehta hai. Given the condition that there is no genetic mutation or there is no harm that the organs. In human, I am talking about Homo sapiens sapiens. So, now, structure. Okay? It basically, if you have uh, looked into various buildings, uh, if you are architecture interested over here, so if you know that we add rebars into our walls, like, eat to rati hai, bricks are there, uske saath saath iron ke rods bhi rati, you know, support it well. Those iron ke rods are basically bones of the house. So there are very, like, there are n number of, you know, uh, rebars present in your home and you don't even know about it. Okay, that is one another topic. I'll have to, you know, <laughs> end everything and tell you if I go into detail. Now, see, what are the functions of skeleton? What are the functions of skeleton? First is basically providing support and shape. Okay. Now, support and shape, your body has a definite shape as a tool. Okay. Now, um, just tell me one thing. If you had, if you didn't have such distinctive bones, like I have two hands, right? अगर मैं एक डॉग के साथ कंपेयर करूं अपने हैंड्स को एंड मैं डॉग का हैंड अपने हैंड में लगा दूं तो क्या वो वुड आई बी एबल टू होल्ड दिस स्टाइलस इन माय हैंड राइट नाउ नो राइट आई वुडंट बी एबल टू होल्ड दिस स्टाइलस इन माय हैंड राइट नाउ बिकॉज़ आई डू नॉट आई वुड नॉट बी एबल टू हैव दैट स्ट्रक्चर आई वुड नॉट बी एबल टू हैव दैट सपोर्ट एंड दैट शेप इन ऑर्डर टू यू नो होल्ड अप एंड डू सम काइंड्स ऑफ स्टफ सो आई एम सॉरी um the human skeleton provides first of all support and shape the next thing it provides protection now how protection you may ask see this is your lungs This is your lungs. They are protected by rib cage. Sorry, but jada bada bada bada. Rib cages. Yeah, your lungs are protected by rib cages. Then there is heart. Protection this way. It provides protection to various vital or organelles. Sorry, various vital organs, you know, that are required to carry out the daily day-to-day -day procedures. For example, breathing. If you feel your chest, if you just press into it, you might feel some hard and rigid structure. Those are basically ribs. They extend till your mid thoracic, mid thoracic cavity. Then just they just open down till your pelvic girdles. Then after that, everything is just a hollow piece. It is just a piece of muscle. In the same way, you have your vertebral columns, right? Vertebral columns are so uh, you know uh, protecting your spinal cord. So in the same way. Uh, they provide protection. Next thing, movement.
मूवमेंट एज वी नो ठीक है सपोर्ट एंड स्ट्रक्चर प्रोवाइड कर रहा है I am moving my hand here in the earth up. So I am writing up. Say that is why that is due to bone saw. Leverage. How leverage? Leverage. If you are not you know familiar with the word, let me tell you. Leverage basically means lever. ठीक है, which basically um, increase the speed and distance of muscles. So, for example. अगर मैं बात करू अपनी हैंड की तो इफ आई कंट्राइट यू नो कॉन्स्ट्रिक्ट माई बाइस तो कितने जल्दी देखो कितने जल्दी मेरा आर्म मूव हो रहा है दिस इज लेवरेज ठीक है तो बोन्स आर प्रोवाइडिंग लेवरेज अगर ये नहीं होता तो माई हैंड्स वुड हैव जस्ट ड्रॉप डाउन लाइक दिस इट वु नॉट है it also helps in the formation of blood cells this is a concept of clusters so i'm not going into details red blood cell then it is a storehouse of calcium and phosphorus in the body cool now अब आता है मेन पार्ट अब बारी आती है प्रैक्टिस प्रैक्टिकल्स की नाउ कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंस ऑफ अ स्केलेटन व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ स्केलेटन ठीक है सो लेट मी टेल यू फ्रेंड्स स्टूडेंट्स दे आर बोन्स कार्टिलेजेस ligaments these are the constituents of a skeleton bones as we all know are bones they look something like this if you are familiar like this oh sorry maybe drawing bahut kharab hai so just you know let me try and draw a better bone i cannot basically let us say this is a bone over here theek hai this is a bone cut in uska samne ka head alag kar diye theek hai just imagine it like that forget it i cannot draw bones <laughs> so what are bones i told you what are bones bones comprise hard framework of the body now what are cartilages cartilages are basically your nose if you touch your ears these are cartilages they are hard but they are not that hard ki wo ekdam move hi na kare bone to move hi nahi karte na tum jaise ha although aise aise move karte hain but if i try to you know just push it like this ye ja raha hai kya apni jagah se kahin ye is straight hi structure hai na kahan teda ho raha hai but if i push my ear like this it is going to and fro theek hai i can even move it like this so it is going to and fro so that is cartilage basically it is a bone but it is not that hard so not hard now ligaments they basically you know provide structure like um connecting structures so for example your ears kyunki ears agar aise simple rehte to you would have heard 360 degree sound but agar aise front ki towards pointed hai to samne ka sound jaldi sunai dega back ka sound kam sunai dega that is another concept ligaments ligaments they bind up bones together now let us see this joint over here joints to rehte hain acha i am sorry mm Tissues, they are ligaments. Yeah, right. See, um, either be this is a joint, right? Ab either to rahega nahi ligament. Ligament rahega, but utna nahi rahega. But agar hum log iski baat kare, this portion, this palm is the best example of you know uh, conducting a ligament. See, ligaments are these parts. यू नो यहाँ पर छोटे 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 एकदम टाइनी 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 बोन्स रहते हैं जो कि आगे हम लोग जाके साइड में देखेंगे सो आगे जाके हम लोग साइड में देखने वाले सो दे आर यू नो हैविंग लिगमेंट्स नाउ लिगमेंट्स आर यूज्ड टू कनेक्ट बोन्स कनेक्ट बोन्स नाउ 
bones. Let us, you know, elaborate on bones more. Go and see. Chow. Bones are the chief organs of a skeleton. Okay. Now, it consists of both organic and inorganic material. No, no, no. Organic be right now. Inorganic be right now. Okay. Then, is me kya karega? Calcium and phosphorus. Okay. Now, if you dissolve this calcium from the bone, it is known as a decalcified bone. Okay. Decalcified matlab, removal of calcium from a bone. D matlab removal, calcification matlab calcium. Okay. Calci, calcium. Decalcification, decalcification matlab calcium. Now, what is I'm sorry, this is my dog over here just trying to irritate me. Now, bones can be of all types. It, they can be long. They can be short. They can be flat. And they could be irregular. Let's talk about long bones. Long bones are basically those bones, okay? Jinko, uh, you know, shaft lage at the end me, okay? They are filled with marrow and end is and spongy, okay? The long bones, you can say this bone, okay? Your two bones are present over here, right? First is this one over here, then the other one runs media side. Same, same over here. Then you have this one. From here till here. Then you have your rib cages. Take your ribs. So those all comes in the long bones. So basically, chief bones. Then you have short bones. Just a second. Hmm. Short bones are like box and spongy. Okay? They show little to no movement, such as your ankle, okay? your wrist. Achha, sorry, ankle is in your legs. This is your wrist. Okay? Pe bhi jo bones are. They are very, very short. Okay? Mene na? Chote, 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 chote bones rehte, they are bonded. So they are shorter and present in ankles, shorter and flexible. Because if we are doing this, if we are not here short bones, then there is no flexibility here. Okay? Uh, ankles and wrist. Common example. Then we have flat bones. Flat bones are very low. For example, your shoulder blade. Yes, shoulder blade is a bone. Okay, so it looks like this. This is your shoulder. This is your shoulder blade. Then another one over here, like this. It looks somewhat like this. Okay, this is a shoulder blade. So shoulder blade. And sternum. Sternum kya hota hai? Sternum is basically if you run your hand down this, you know, down your, uh, you can say, down your throat. 
if you run it down your throat, when you reach the thoracic cavity, you will feel that it is flat over there. That is the sternum. Basically. Now, let us look at the structure of long bone. Now, I'll actually have to draw the structure. So, pardon me, give me some time in order to draw it. Yay, done. <laughs> that was fast. See, now. This has a yellow matter in it. This is called a marrow. Okay, so the marrow is there. Then here are some cartilages, which are known as scaling cartilages. Okay, then there is ligament over here. Well, then a ligament, ligament tear, okay, ligament tear, okay, that's that only. Now, here present is red marrow. Then these bones are actually you know spongy and porous. bones This part, this part, they are spongy. And they have red marrow in them. This is the this was the structure of a long bone. Now Yellow marrow is okay. So let us start with uh, another topic that is the human skeleton. Now, um, as we know that uh, a human skeleton has two hundred six bones plus another tiny bones. Another very teeny tiny, like small, small bones are there. Okay, those are, you know, um, in the ears. Now, um, let us take a brief, you know, discussion about what are the different types of bone and what are the different types of muscles, what are the different types of ligaments and joints found in a human body. So, this actually comes under anatomy. Uh, if you are familiar with medical concepts. So this comes under anatomy. So basically, we are learning anatomy right now. We are learning the uh, skeleton, uh, the anatomy of skeleton. So let us start. First of all, let me tell you that a skeleton has two divisions. Okay. Now, first is the exile skeleton. Okay. So exile skeleton, me kya kya aata hai? Exile skeleton covers the head. Wait, let me get a darker one. Okay. Exile skeleton has the head, the rib area, and the pelvic area. This whole region is called exile. Oh, Exile skeleton. Okay. And the rest, meaning these legs, these arms, and everything, they come under appendicular skeleton. Correct. So that is the different, uh, you know, the two main division of skeletons. Let us move forward. We have the different segments of a human skeleton. Okay. So first of all, let us look at the skull. Okay. Skull, as you can see over here, is the upper portion of uh, the human body. Okay. Just a second. Just give me a second. Yeah, it is the upper portion of the human body. So it is made up of a 
I'm sorry. There seems to be some issue. Yeah. So it is made up of, uh, you can say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bones. Okay. I, I have named them over also here. here. Two to four, five bones I've made, six, and the rest are over here. So the skeleton, the head is made up of eight bones. It is made up of eight bones. Okay. Just makes a few are mentioned the frontal, meaning this portion, the nasal, meaning this portion. The temporal meaning this portion, okay? The zygomatic meaning this portion, then the maxilla meaning this, and this is the mandible, okay? That is the skull. Now, this is this part, okay? Eight bones are in this part, above this. In this whole region, there are eight bones. In the other region, which consists of the face, meaning this region, this has 14 bones in it. It has altogether 14 bones in it. Okay? That was about the skull. Now let us look at in detail. Look, look at it in detail. So, see, there is parietal bone the, over here. This is occipital. If you touch your back, it, you would feel that there is a slight bump in your head. That is the occipitus. Then there is temporal, meaning this. You can also find temporal lobes over here. Then we have first and second cervical vertebra just beneath them. Cool. And in front, consisting of the face, we have frontal, nasal, temporal again. We have zygomatic, this one, and we have maxilla, mandible. That was about the skull. So now let us move down to the shoulders. Okay. So the shoulders. I hope it is visible. Um, no. This. This. One. Yeah. Let us move towards the shoulder. Okay, first of all, from here to here, we have the cervical vertebra. So CV, okay? This is the head part. Let us name it the skull. The skull, okay? Then this is cervical vertebra, okay? Then we have over here the clavicles or the collarbone, you can see. This over here is the collarbone or clavicle. Okay. See, it is also mentioned these bones. These bones are the clavicles over here. Okay. Now, if we look at it from the uh, dorsal side, we have it over here. Okay. Now, this is the sternum. This is a flat bone. It is called the sternum. Then you have your ribs. Your lungs are enclosed over here in this shape. Your heart is over here. Your stomach is over here. We have the liver over here, the pancreas, then the small intestine. Correct? I see structure, right? So we have our rib cages over here. Supporting the internal organs or protecting the inner organs. Now, this bone is called the humerus. Okay. Then, in the forearm, since the picture is not here, we have two different bones. Okay. Crisscrossing each other when we fold our hands like this, when it is in this position, and in this, they are so two separate. So, if you look at it from this side, I have one bone running from here to here. I have one bone running from here to here. Sorry, it is not visible. I have one bone running from here to here. I have one bone running from here to here. So, those are radius and Allah. Okay. For easier reference, here it is too different. Okay. Always remember that the picture you are viewing 
is laterally inverted. So your right side will, would be their left side and your left side would be their right side. So you're looking at a view like this. Okay? Like this. It is their right one. So this one. So here, according to diagram, this one is my re, uh, radius. This one is my Allah. Okay? If I show you like this, they are crisscrossing like this. So I have this as my radius and this the crossing one is my Allah. Okay? That is why we are able to do this. That is just due to the, you know, radiuses and Allah's. Now, this is the vertebral column. Okay? So, from here to here, we have our thoracic vertebra. From here to here, we have our cervical vertebra. Then from here to here, we have our lumbar vertebra. Lumbar vertebra. Okay? Now, let us move down to the, you know, lower vertebral columns. This is the sacrum. It is a part of vertebral, uh, you know, uh, column which has, um, what do you call it? Mm. It is basically condensed, you can see. So, uh, you can see one sacrum has five bones in it. So, five bones in a densely condensed manner like this. It has five bones. And then the coccyx has six, uh, four bones altogether. Okay. So, it would seem something like this, ascending downwards, then this, and it will have one, two, three, four bones. Okay. Now, I told you, I forgot to tell you one thing. You see this indentation over here. You know, this indentation, this is known as four men's. Magnum. Okay. So it is basically, you know, a gap. Where can I draw this? Huh? So it would seem something like sorry. This is how a skull looks from the, you know. Uh, anterior side, these are your teeth. This is the eye region, and this is the skull. So, this region, which region? This region is the foreman's magnum. Okay. Now, moving down, we were talking about. Our lumbar vertebra. So lumbar vertebra starts from here till here. Then from here to here we have cervical. Here to here we have cervical. Then here to here we have thoracic vertebra. Okay. Now I told you this is the humerus. Radius is an alas. Now moving in on to the hands. Okay. Hands may. Just a second. Yeah. Hands me, these are the carpals. Let me just change the color again. These are the carpals. Okay. These are the metacarpals. Can I would just, you know, take different colors just to portray it better. These are the metacarpals. Okay. These are the phalanges. Yeah, these are the phalanges. Okay, so it this one is the proximal phalange. This is the middle phalange, and the uh, lower one is the distal phalange. Okay, you you might be able to see this structure, right? This. So this is the proximal phalange, middle phalange, distal phalange. Okay, from here, this part, this part is your carpal. This part is your metacarpal. So one, two, three, four, five metacarpals. One carpal, five metacarpals. Then uh, you can say five into three. That is, sorry. Thumb me, we have uh, only proximal and distal. In the rest of the finger fingers, we have proximal, middle, and distal. Okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. We have fourteen phalanges, five metacarpals, and uh, one carpal, wrist bone. You can say, this bone. 
okay, which allows for movement very much. Now, let us look at the leg, or you can say, you know, the lower part of the foot, the foot where you can say. So, the foot has uh, tarsals over here. This whole region is named as tarsal. Okay. Then we have metatarsals. See, it is already labeled that it is metatarsal. So this, 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 five metatarsals. Then phalanges. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now, a catch over here is that your leftmost one, okay, that means your little toe, that is this one, it only has a proximal phalange and a distal phalange. Okay, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We have 14 phalanges in our toes as well. Now, these are the phalanges. Now, Moving into the lower uh, abdomen region, moving into the you know uh, locomotive region, which is our legs. So, um, okay, before the legs, let us study the pelvis. So, this is the ilium. Okay, then this is known as pubic, and this is known as ischium. Okay. And uh, behind here, we might have something called acetabulum. So this region is acetabulum. Okay. Now let us move at uh, the downside. So we have a pair of femurs this and this this and this we have femurs okay what are femurs femurs basically are the longest bones in your body tried and tested and achha, one more thing we have hip bones over here as well okay so this ilium pubis and ischium that i told you over here are parts of the hip bone and this is the pelvis okay so we have these combination of hip bones and then, and then we have the side ones as pelvis. Okay. Now, femurs. Okay. Hmm. So femur, the thigh bone. Then we have the petalia. Patella, sorry, wrong pronunciation. A pair of patellas or kneecaps. Kneecaps are like this. Okay. They are basically, you know, um, junctions, you can say, so that it provides leverage. Kneecap is basically like this, right? Your leg when straight, when it is extended upwards. So this is the function of the kneecap pretty most. Okay. But it has a catch, it moves in the opposite direction. So it, if your hand is like this, you're moving it like this. So this would be the kneecap and this would be the lower leg. This would be the upper leg. Okay, just an example, not a practical demonstration. Now, like your hand, your leg also has two bones, like the downside, okay? Below the knee, you have two legs known as tibia and fibula. So this one is the fibula. Wait, let me use a different color pen. This is the tibia. And this is the fibula. Okay. Then we have uh, tarsus. This means the upper part. You don't have to learn this. Uh, but tarsus, we have talus on the upper side and calcineus on the lower side. Okay. That means, you know, your toe. This part. If I try to draw, which I know I'll, I'm terrible at. Your back of the toe so looks something like this, right? Then you have your toe actually in front. Okay. So this part, this ko bolte na, bade log edhi. Okay. See, idhar achhe se dikh raha hai.
ठीक है सो दिस पार्ट इज द एडी और यू कैन से कैल्सिनियस दिस इज दिस पार्ट इज द टैक् नाउ दैट इज द ओवर व्यू ऑफ द स्केलेटन ठीक है द बेसिक बेसिक ओवर व्यू ऑफ अ स्केलेटन नाउ let us dive more into just let me hmm the next thing we will talk about is the vertebral column itself ठीक है, so you can see a big picture of vertebral column in front of you, correct? Now let us dive straight into this. What are the different parts of the vertebral column? ठीक है, so the first part is the cervical vertebra. Let us just give it some time so that you know it could be adjusted. Just two minutes it would take. There seems to be some, um, you know, network issue from this side. Yeah. So we have the cervical vertebra. So cervical vertebra has dot seven bones. So first, okay. Now let us in. Let me tell you the naming of the vertebra. Okay. So we have cervical vertebras. We have thoracic vertebras. We have lumbar vertebras. Right. So C one. To C seven, we will have cervical vertebra. Then T one to T twelve, we will have thoracic vertebra. Then on the lumbar vertebra, we have L one to L five. Okay, that means seven bones in cervical vertebra, twelve bones in thoracic vertebra, fifteen uh, bones in lower vertebra, lumbar vertebra. Sorry, not lower. Okay. So we have lumbar cervical vertebra. We have C one to C five currently. Okay. So this is C one, C two, C three. Sorry, let me just you know zoom in. So C one, C two, C three, C four, C five. ठीक है? So one, two, three, four, five. This is the cervical vertebra. ठीक है? Moving down, we have the thoracic vertebra. Now, notice that in the uh, cervical vertebra, you don't have spaces for you know you don't need the ribs. So they are just you know enclosed like this. They are just in this shape. If you look at from the upper side, they're just like this. You know, but when you look at the thoracic vertebra, it has extensions like this. So you know, ribs can actually convert. It. See, look at this part. That is, those are the extension for ribs. Okay. So we have one, two, three, four, five done. Then we have T one starting from here. This is T one. This is T two. T three. T four. T five. T six. T seven. T eight. T nine. T ten. T eleven, and T twelve. Okay. So this all. consists of the thoracic vertebra ठीक है now moving down to the lumbar region we have over there sorry about the background noises i am recording in the morning so it is you know a bit busy over here see we have l1 l2 l3 l4 And L five, okay. Then we have the sacrum. Then we have the coccyx.
ठीक है सो नंबर वन दिस वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव ठीक है देन सेक्रम देन द कॉकेट्स ठीक है तो टी ट्वेल्व टी इलेवन टी टेन नाइन एट सेवन सिक्स फाइव फोर थ्री टू वन ठीक है देन वी हैव एल फाइव एल फोर एल थ्री एल टू सॉरी सी फाइव सी फोर सी थ्री सी टू सी वन ठीक है दैट वॉज अबाउट द वर्टिब्रल कॉलम If you have the clear picture of it, let me just draw it over here. This is the lumbar vertebra, and the rest follows as same. Now, let us look at more detail <laughs> about you know a disc. This is a single vertebra in front of. Sorry, this might not be visible again. A single we have a single vertebra. You don't have to say single vertebra because vertebra is the singular word. Okay, vertebra. Okay, so let us look at it. This is, I guess, L two. This is lumbar. Okay, this is lumbar vertebra. Sorry, I took out the wrong picture. This is the lumbar vertebra. Okay, but the uh, you know the cervical vertebras and thoracic vertebras are similar, similar in structures. Okay, this you can say is it follows the same for thoracic vertebra, just that they have. Transverse processes over here. Yes, they they also have transfer. Yes, this can be followed for uh, your uh, thoracic vertebra. Okay. Now, except you delete this part, you just keep this part. Okay. Huh. So, doesn't this looks like the look like a mosquito to you? They have their eyes over here and then their teeny tiny mouth. <laughs> okay. You have of the jokes. Now, let's get back to study. This is the thoracic vertebra, correct? Now, this part is called the rib fasci. Okay. Then we have the articular fasci. Okay. Then we have the body. Okay. Then this is known as the neural canal. This is transverse process. Okay. That was and these are the neural arcs. same follows for lumbar spine also so i don't have to explain that let us come toward the combined view okay so this part is known as the atlas and this part is known as axis okay if you look from the front so we have lamina we have articular processes we have accessory processes vertebral body and all this is the lumbar vertebra okay that was about our lumbar thoracic and cervical vertebra now what about the ribs the ribs i told you they are 12 there are 12 pair of ribs let us go above we have ribs over here let us delete everything from here and focus on the ribs okay so you have 12 pairs of ribs okay so these are the first and these are the 12th first ours are pretty much straight the rest are in this manner 45 degrees inclined to each other <clears throat> 
Now, there is nothing much about the rib. There are false ribs and there are true ribs. Okay, the first seven pair of ribs are true ribs, and the rest are false false ribs because they, you know, just converge into they they come down from here and they converge into the sternum, except of being, you know, being laterally converged into the sternum. Now, the from T1 to T12, okay, there are ribs emerging out of it. Okay, then the lumbar does not have any ribs emerging out of it. The cervical doesn't have any ribs emerging out of it. Now, sternum, I told you, the breastbone, it is flat, it is a long flat bone lying in the middle frontal part of your chest or your thoracic cavity, you can say. Now, let us look at the appendicular skeleton. The appendicular skeleton, I told you already, the humeruses, the radius, the carpals, and phalanges, then we have hemer. Sorry, femur, then we have tibia, fibula, tarsus, metatarsus, again phalanges, patella, the kneecap. Okay, then we have the girdles. Okay, let me tell you about the girdles. See, we have shoulder, shoulder girdles over here. Now, this part attaches the shoulder girdle to shoulder. Okay, then we have the glenoid cavity over here. This part, this small part is known as the glenoid cavity. Okay. Then we have the outer border and the inner border. Okay, done. Now, let us move down. I told you about the pelvic region. We have a pelvis, acetabulum, then ilium, ischium, and all hip bones. And then we have, you know, the lumbar vertebras connecting them. So we did that. Now, let us move towards the joints. Okay. The joints. Now, there are three types of joints. First is movable, partially movable, and non movable. Okay. Movable ke, uh, examples, you can say gliding uh, joint. Movable ke examples, we will come back to later. Let us talk about non movable first. So, non movable. This thing, the joint is found in your, uh, this thing, cranial. So, in your skull, I can see. So, this, this, and this. This is how your skull looks like. So, you have the first from here, then here. Then you have a bone over here. So, these, this are the, these are the one, two, three, four, five, six bones of your skeleton. So, these are the joints. Okay, these are the joints or uh, example of immovable joints. Okay, name I won't tell you right now because it is not uh, required. Okay, now partially movable joints, partially movable joints, for example, we can see over here. Okay, when ribs expand and contract, so we have our ribs. Okay, we have our ribs over here. So when lungs expand, okay, the thoracic cavity also expands. When this thoracic cavity expands, your ribs come out in an outward fashion. So they open, for example, how can I say? When you blow a balloon, so it inflates, right? So, similarly, if you feel your chest, if you breathe in, you hold and you feel your chest go back in, you would feel 
keep bones the bones of uh, ribs you know they are just you know moving sort of but they that is so little movement that is not easily recognized so those are the example of partially movable joints so you can see the sternum okay now we have the freely movable joints Sorry for my writing. It is very bad. Okay, if you don't understand, you can you know just text me what is written over here. I would tell you. So freely movable joints are of three, four, five types. I guess are there five types in your book? No, there is only four types. In your book. Okay, five type is basically a derivation. So a gliding joint. B. We have pivot joint. C. We have hinge. And D. We have ball and socket. And E. You can include as synovial joints. Okay. Now, A. What is the function of gliding joints? Okay, gliding joints they occur between the bones of your wrist and also between the bones of your ankle as well as between vertebrae. So gliding joints glide like this. For example, this is the vertebra. So they move to and fro. Okay, so I cannot actually you know tell you like this, but I, I guess I can. So they move like this, back, then front, then back. Okay, so they glide like this. They glide along like this. Okay, so they this also causes herniating this herniation, which is you know a medical concept, a medical name for disc which are slipped, basically. So yeah, those are examples of uh, you know gliding joints. Okay. And between vertically. Okay. Now let us talk about pivot joint. Pivot joints, uh, how can I tell you? Pivot joint is kind of like you know, uh, it is like one bone is rotated over pivot like of the other. So you have um, how the skull is rotated. Matlab, um, you can, how can I explain this? Okay, uh, let us take a cycle. Okay, let us take a bicycle. Okay, you have this pivot over here. Okay, so when you move the handle to and fro, so the tire also moves along with it. That joint which is present over there, which is connecting your whole body so that your handle can move freely, is a pivot joint. In the same way, your head, when it is connected to the cervical column, there is a pivot joint over there. It looks something like this. Sorry. Then there is a circle. Okay, so here the skull is attached. Okay. The skull is attached over there and it moves in a to and from axis. How am I able to move my this thing? Because of a pivot joint. Okay. Pivot joints can move 180 degrees. So here to here, 180 degrees, right? Zero, 180. And again, zero, then 180. So that is an example of a pivot joint. We have hinge joints. Hinge joints are basically those which look like this. Okay, they form a hinge. Okay, so your humerus and ulna. Okay, uh, this part over here. Here is your humerus. Here is your ulna, radius and ulna, right? So they form an hinge. This is an hinge, a lever 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल ठीक है सो इट गोज दिस वे एंड दिस नेक्स्ट थिंग वी हैव बॉल एंड सॉकेट बॉल एंड सॉकेट जॉइंट प्लीज वेरी सेकेंड या सो वी हैव द बॉल एंड सॉकेट जॉइंट इट लुक्स समथिंग लाइक दिस हेयर इज द सॉकेट वेयर द बोस गोज बोन्स गो इन then down ठीक है so it can rotate the bone can rotate as well as move up and down ठीक है so it goes like if I take this bone and I see this is an example of ball and socket joint so it can move in whatever direction you want it to move ठीक है so it the joint moves inside like this like this like this ठीक है, so that is an example. Your shoulders are the best example for ball and socket joint. See how freely am I able to move? That is due to ball and socket joint. Of of course, we have some ligaments, we have some cartilages over here, we have the muscles, the quadruples over here. But that is you know not much mentioned when we study about this. So just learn this. So we have uh, actually an example of femur over here. We have femur. This is acetabulum. ठीक है, that is your movable joints. Ball and socket, I told you. Now, synovial joints are those type of joints which are freely movable. ठीक है, like the sh uh, shoulder ones, the knee ones. ठीक है. So, the synovial joints looks somewhat like this: a bone, then another bone, then a soft palate, then extension. Okay. So, let us get into detail of it. Okay. So we have B one. Bone one, bone two, okay. Then there is synovial fluid, okay. Then we have the synovial membrane. This one, okay. Then we have cartilages. So this part and this part. Wait, yeah, these come over here. Okay, we have cartilages over here. Okay, this is an example of a synovial joint. Now, where are these synovial joints found? They are found in the knee. Okay. Acha, let me show you a knee joint. Okay, it is very fascinating. So let me draw a knee joint first of all. Okay. So I am done drawing the diagram. Let us now look at it in a detailed manner. So we have over here femur. Okay, then we have tibia. Then you have the knee cap or the platella. Okay. Then you have the synovial fluid. Okay. Then there are synovial membranes too. This is the synovial membrane. Okay. This is a muscle over here. This muscle contracts the platella. This is actually joined to the platella, and when it is joined, this is attached to another muscle over here, which pulls them. So you know, um, if I grab the above, above muscle, I pull it, the platella gets pulled, and so your knees move in an upward fashion. See, like this. Here is one muscle which is attached to this cap, 
ठीक है देन दिस कैपिटल इज अटैच्ड टू दिस मसल ओवर हियर सो व्हेन आई फ्लेक्स दिस मसल ठीक है आई पुल दिस मसल सो आई एम पुलिंग इट सो इट गोस देयर ठीक है दिस कम्स डाउन ओवर हियर एंड माय आर्म्स गो स्ट्रेट सिमिलरली इफ आई पुश इफ आई कॉन्ट्रैक्ट दिस मसल सो इट गोस अगेन बैक डाउन ठीक है यू सी दिस दिस इज ड्यू टू दैट the same function is followed over here this is actually very fascinating studying about human uh, joints now now there is fibrous capsule over here the function of fibrous uh, capsule is basically you know a protection like dislocation wagera na ho jaye karke that is followed hmm now we are done with bones let us move to muscles okay muscles basically they provide movement hmm? they provide movement they cover the skeletal framework ठीक है, then it also maintains body posture. Then, um, let us, uh, you know, uh, talk about muscles a bit. It is a small thing, so it would just end in five ten minutes. I told you about the lever mechanism, so you don't need to worry about it now. most let us read your book a bit most muscles are long bundles of contractile tissues each muscle usually has two ends of fixed end where the muscle originates and a movable end which pulls some other part this movable end is drawn out to form the structure the tendon which is attached to the bone when stimulated by a nerve the muscle contracts to become shorter and thicker and thus it pulls the bone at movable end see let me draw a muscle over here this is a muscle then tendon then a bone okay so this is tendon this is muscle this is the immovable part this is the movable part okay so when your tendons contract sorry when your muscles contract when these ye jo muscles hai they are contracting so they are pulling the tendons so let us say this is a muscle this is a tendon this is a bone if my muscles contract so i'm pulling the bone with me that is what it is trying to say okay now there are uh, also antagonistic types of muscles okay antagonistic types of muscles are those kinds of muscles which you know uh, when moved by a muscle those structures when are moved by a muscle they cannot return back to its original position without using the action of another muscle okay these are called antagonistic muscles okay for example the bicep agar upper arm flex kar raha hai to it bends the lower arm over the upper arm straightening the lower arm is brought in by the triceps okay so these are your triceps over here this straightens the bicep so that is the negative. basically you can remember this by you know helping word so like one muscle sent another muscle to get back into position those are those are known as antagonistic muscles now there are also three kinds of muscle except antagonistic kinds of okay first is voluntary second is involuntary third is cardiac ठीक है, voluntary muscles are those kinds of muscle which can be moved by your will. Involuntary muscles are basically those muscles which are not controlled by your will. Cardiac muscles are basically present in the heart. These are also known as voluntary are also known as striated, unstriated, and 
and cardiac muscles. Okay. So if you look at the example of cardiac muscle, it looks somewhat like this. Okay. Then we have nucleus, we have divisions. If you look at striated muscles, they will look something like this. Okay. If you look at unstriated ones, it would not, it would look like this. Okay. Now, let us move further. I told you about the lever action. Okay. Just read it once. Okay. Just look at the diagram of it once because, you know, this, there are some uh, tricep muscles, you know, it is being told somewhat like over there, but it is not actually, you know, important. I can tell you it like this. See, this is the biceps. The first example, this is the biceps. They are connecting to this bone over here, which is the radius and ulna. Now, when this bicep contracts, it's, it pulls the other one. See, so this might, if you see over here, sorry for this, but if you see this over here, you can see the bicep actually flexing. Okay. So if you touch over here, just, you know, feel this part, you will feel that, yes, a lump is forming over there. That is basically your muscles contract. Okay. In the same way, your heel. So this is your heel then they have this muscle attached to it. Okay. So when this contracts, you're able to have a tippy toe like this. Okay. When these contract, you're able, able to, you know, stand in tiptoes. Both there, Ki, the, the way those, uh, what do you call them? Ballet dancers, they stand on their tiptoes like this. These are their tips and these are their legs and they just stand like this, right? These are known as tippy-toe positions. So it occurs due to flexing of this muscle. Ballet dancers have this muscles very much, you know, trained. Very trained muscles they have. So they are able to do that. Okay. Thank you for uh, spending your time with me while learning these two beautiful chapters on uh, human body and medical science. I will get back soon to you guys. Till then, uh, do like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And stay tuned for more of refreshing and more amazing content. I will be providing my handmade uh, notes soon on this chapter. Till then, bye-bye and have a great day.